Final thoughts time for Waters and Narissus. And this is just another sweet little game design from Steve Finn or Dr. Finn Games. You know, the guy behind Biblios and so many other great, wonderful, fun little filler style games. Now, this is interesting. This is a bit bigger, uh, you know, a bit more expansive of a game than what... Steve normally does. He normally makes these games that you're just going to bang out in 15 minutes, but during those 10, 15, 20 minutes, you're going to have a lot of, you know, interesting, not super heavy, but interesting uh, little puzzly decisions to make. This is a bigger game. This is going to be 40 to 60 minutes long, depending on how many players you play. There's a lot more that goes on, and there's a lot more you get done in this game. Every round, um, you know, having to play all these different crew member cards, and simultaneous re action reveal is probably just about if not one of, certainly one of my favorite gameplay mechanisms of all time. Absolutely love it. And it works fantastically here. That delicious, oh please, please let me be the only one to pilot here. I need this pilot. I need this. Oh no, why did you do that? Oh, what am I going to do? Now I can't get to where I need to go because I'm going to have to get into the third pilot slot, which doesn't let me move the way I need to. Um, maybe this is when I actually spend some money. Uh, you know, but I was saving that for a rainy day. Um, you know, that stuff works great. And I should also say, the two-player dummy works wonderfully. It is, it's just super smooth. I don't think this is going to be one that people would find onerous. It's just a simple matter of, you know, I mean, really, the dummy is on the board and, you know, it tightens the board up a little bit, but that's really not what's important. As important is every round the dummy player is going to pick an action, and that's one, uh, you know, and that means once he's taken that, we get a weaker version of that action, whether it's the pilot or the scientist or the purser or whatever it is, and trying to anticipate what he's going to do, because of course he's completely random, but as he goes on, you know what cards he's still got, because you can see what he's played. It's all the information is right there, and so you can hedge your bets about, okay, there's only a one in three chance he's going to captain right now. And I know Jen, my other opponent, has already captained. So, I think I feel pretty good. I got a 66% chance. Oh, the dummy player! Um, that stuff works really, really nicely. And the whole, you know, that whole core mechanism, you know, the main thing about this game is simultaneous action selection to be able to effectively do worker placement. I guess, yeah, it is worker placement because uh, it's our putting our workers out and trying to get the best slots possible, um, hoping that you get the, into the right slot at the right time, and but inevitably you won't, and then you got to change your plans on the fly. But all that drives this little set collection engine of picking up these lovely little gems that just fill up the board. The board is absolutely um, lovely to look at. And I said this right up front, but I have to give huge props to Dr. Finn Games again. Other publishers should pay attention and follow his lead. Yes, those gems are gorgeous if you're not colorblind. But if you're a colorblind player, they're a nightmare. Steve Finn knows that. He didn't want to compromise on having a really cool, flashy presentation with these neat little translucent gems. So he also is at, you know, uh, uh, you know taking on the extra expense to include cardboard shits that are colorblind friendly. So you can have your cake and eat it too. I think that's brilliant. Hats off to him. More publishers should really pay attention to these sorts of things. Really, really nicely done. Now, I will say, I was saying right up front, he's known for shorter games that are, you know, kind of um, light to midweight. This is a longer game that's light to midweight. I wouldn't call this a gateway. I would call it a nice next step. Um, you know, I mean, if, if you've introduced somebody to Lords of Waterdeep, let's say, as a, as a worker placement game. And, you know, okay, you, you got the idea of how you place workers, but now you're taking it to the next level because, okay, I want to do this action. I've got the card that'll let me place the worker, but are you going to do it the same round as me? I think it's a really great next step. I think it's probably a little bit too light for me and Jen still because um, for something this light, we want it to be like 15, 20 minutes as opposed to a longer game. But... This is a game I could play with my mom, my or my mother-in-law, for that matter, or my father-in-law. Uh, you know, I, I think this is a very, very nice game that you can introduce people to, or um, could be a next a step. Um, you know, the 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 pilot, or I'm sorry, not the pirate. The, the the pirate theme is very, very nice, and it's very much appreciated that this is not a game with pirates where players are constantly trying to steal and and um, attack each other. It's a live and let live thing as we all just race around this uh, this lovely blue uh, sea picking up as many gems as possible. And yeah, Jen and I, we definitely enjoyed our time with the Waters of Neurosis. And that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Have a very, very nice day. Be sure to hit that eye in the top right corner screen to go kick out, check out the Kickstarter page. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye